gentlemen, please remain standing for the march on squadron colors. So you play the men in the room for the day they come. Commander of 415 Squadron is Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Davis. The Lieutenant Colonel Davis is né à Loretteville, au Québec. Il s'est enrôlé dans les forces armées canadiennes en 1990, dans le cadre du programme de formation des officiers forces régulières, après avoir obtenu son diplôme d'études secondaires à l'école secondaire Ottawa-Morteau au Nouveau-Brunswick. En 1995, il a obtenu le baccalauréat en administration des affaires au Collège militaire royal de Saint-Jean. In 1996, the turn Colonel Davis completed his navigator training at Canadian Forces Air Navigation School in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Upon graduation, he was posted to 405 Long Range Patrol Squadron in Greenwood. While in Greenwood, he completed two operational tours of 405 Squadron. One as an acoustician, and one as a tactical navigator. In 2002, he flew operationally in Southwest Asia as a part of Canada's commitment to Operation Apollo. Lieutenant Colonel Davis has also been posted to 404 Long Range Patrol and Training Squadron as a TAC NAV instructor and the Long Range Patrol Standards and Evaluation Team. Promu au grade de major en 2007, il est rentré au 404e escadron où il a servi comme commandant adjoint. Après quoi, il a pris part à un déploiement en Afghanistan à titre du commandant détachement canadien du AV. Dès son retour de Kandahar, il a participé au programme de commandement et d'état-major interarmé au Collège des Forces canadiennes de Toronto. Après avoir réussi le cours en 2011, il a été affecté à l'élément de coordination de la composante aérospatiale atlantique à Halifax, où il a travaillé comme officier des opérations en cours. En 2013, le lieutenant Colonel Davis a été affecté au commandant des opérations interarmées du Canada à Ottawa pour servir comme chef de cabinet du commandant adjoint expéditionnaire. Promoted to his current rank in 2014, Lieutenant Colonel Davis is now J3 Africa at Sea John. Lieutenant Colonel Davis has two beautiful girls, Ashlyn at 11 and Caitlin at 9. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of Lieutenant Colonel Davis, his father Murray, his girlfriend Lucy, and his daughters Ashley and Caitlin. Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez vous lever pour l'arrivée du lieutenant Colonel Davis, son père Murray, et ses filles Ashley et Caitlin, et sa blonde aussi.
Windows as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the reviewing officer for today's parade is Major General Derek Joyce, Assistant Chief of Military Personnel. Le Major General Derek Joyce entre dans les forces canadiennes en 1985 après l'obtention de baccalauréat dans sciences avec une spécialisation en économie et mathématiques de l'Université de l'Alberta. He earned his Air Nav Air, now Air Combat Systems Officer, wings in 1987 and assumed the duties of Maritime Patrol Navigator on the CP-140 Aurora with 405 Maritime Patrol Squadron, his first of three tours with the Pathfinders. He began his last tour with 405 Squadron as Commanding Officer in 2004 and subsequently deployed to Kabul, Afghanistan in 2006, working in NATO headquarters. From 2007 to 2009, he was appointed Wing Commander here at 14 Wing Green. And in 2010, he assumed the command of the Canadian Forces Aerospace Warfare Center, located at 8 Wing Trent. En août 2011, il est nommé commandant de la Force Opérationnelle Libéchio, à la composante aérienne de l'opération mobile, la participation des forces canadiennes aux opérations de l'OTAN en Libye. En juin 2012, il est promu au grade de brigadier général et est affecté au bureau du conseil privé à Ottawa à titre de conseiller militaire du Conseil national pour la sécurité. Et ensuite, il devient le directeur des opérations pour la politique étrangère et de la défense. En août 2013, il est nommé directeur général carrière militaire au quartier général de la défense en Ottawa. En décembre 2014, il est promu au grade de major général et affecté à son poste actuel de commandant adjoint du commandant du personnel militaire. Major General Joyce attended the United Kingdom Advanced Command and Staff Course and the National Studies Program in Toronto. He has over 3,000 flying hours on the CC-130 Hercules and the CP-140. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remain standing for the arrival of Major General Derek Joyce. Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez vous lever pour l'arrivée du Major General Derek Joyce. Major General Derek Joyce will now inspect the parade. The company team will be the wing commander, Colonel Huddleston, and the 14 wing chief warrant officer, Chief Warrant Officer Jeté. The Major General Joyce will now inspect the parade, accompanied by Colonel Huddleston and the Adjunct Chef of the 14th Escadre, Adjunct Chef Jeté.
Press for March Madness. Mesdames et Messieurs, voyez vous levez pour la défilé. Les spectateurs en uniforme sont reminded de son histoire de colors, c'est un peu plus long. Ils iront rappeler aux spectateurs en uniforme de saluer les drapeaux lorsqu'ils passent devant eux.
Ladies and gentlemen, the wing commander will now proceed with the signing of certificates marking the disbandment of 14 Software Engineering Squadron and the renaming of Maritime Proving and Evaluation Unit to 415 Long Range Patrol Force Development Squadron. Mesdames et Messieurs, le commandant de l'escorte va maintenant procéder avec la signature des certificats qui marqueront la dissolution du 14e escadron de génie logiciel et du changement de titre de l'unité maritime d'essai et d'évaluation à la 415e escadron de patrouille à longue portée et développement de la force. Commanding officers, 14 Software Engineering Squadron and Maritime Proving and Evaluation Unit, fall out! The last commanding officer of Fortune SES will now address the parade. The dernier commandant du 14e escadron de génie logiciel va maintenant s'adresser à la parade. General Joyce, Colonel Huddleston, Colonel Thalberger, Honorary Colonel Silver, distinguished guests, members of 14th Self Engineering Squadron, Maritime Proving and Evaluation Unit, members on parade, I'm honored to stand here before you on this day of days to help in usher a new era for the CP-140 force. I'm going to keep my talk explaining what I believe are the, really the three key points that 14 SES, uh, everybody else is going to want to hear about it. Really, it's just uh, me saying thank you personally for all the hard work and effort over the many years, and specifically this year, in bringing this all together. So, for the first, uh, to my lovely wife, Christine, sitting over on my right, uh, thank you for all your support this year, dear. Uh, it's really meant a lot to me. As CEO, uh, I really quickly came to the realization that there are so many activities on this way. It's amazing. And uh, with that, there was a bit of a, a panic phone call last August, uh, me asking uh, you to go to uh, the air show in Dieppe. And, of course, uh, we were you know, thinking what's going to happen to the kids. Well, you had no problem with that at all. You piled everybody into the family chair. We all made for Moncton. It was a little bit hectic getting down there and back, but we sure had a good time. So for that, I'm very thankful. The 14 SES. For those here on parade, and of course, for those members who are uh, seated in the audience, uh, we have a very good complement of military and civilian personnel in our squadron. I owe everybody a huge thank you for all your support over this last year. Couldn't have done it without you folks. Uh, really couldn't. Based with the impending merger, extreme shortages of personnel, topping it off with a very demanding operation that just sort of sprung up overnight. Everyone put two, three, sometimes even four hats on, literally, uh, to get the job done. We helped deploy a critical capability in support of op impact. We got through all the ins and outs of all your structure, putting out so many fires along the way. 
Our squadron did an interim move last summer to support a critical capability on the wing. And uh, after 30 years working in a software outfit, there's really one thing that kind of struck me as I walked through the empty spaces was, my God, we have so many printers. <laughs> through all the chaos and confusion, everyone really kept their chins up. And that was the big thing I noticed, walking through the lines and uh, seeing everybody. Uh, you know, for the most part, we all really did a good job keeping everybody's spirits up, and that was the important part. Morale was quite high throughout all the goings on. We celebrated how busy things got, we're happy to help each other, knowing we were all contributing to something bigger than any one person could accomplish on their own. The Colonel Huddleston, sir, my next call is to you as the wing commander, and for all your hard work over this last year, and really for the two years you've been here in your command of 14 Wing. Thank you for your leadership, focus, determination throughout what has become the most significant movement within the CP-140 force, really in recent history, but pretty much in history, I would say. I'm gonna go on a, a limb there and just, just call it what it is. Colonel Huddleston came to agreement with the days of his arrival, and he was informed one of his units was at risk of being dissolved, along with a number of other sweeping changes brought in from outside of this room. Needless to say, this caused a bit of concern for everybody. But instead of getting frustrated, Colonel Huston set in motion the plan that has us all here on parade today. Discussions were had, numerous briefings produced, Lots of late nights, and Major Deutsch can attest to that. Again, thank you also, Mike, for all the work you put in. And with the help of a few key players, LFP restructure was accomplished as part of the CP-140 Get Well program. Ladies and gentlemen, our wing commander succeeded with LFP restructure within mere months since its, since its inception. Sir, as this phase of LFP restructure draws to a close, I really only have two points to need, just a bit of clarification. I'm really still not sure exactly what a squiggly amp is, and I'm yet to figure out the best way to be a crow. So to sum up, to our cohorts at MPU, as we prepare to move up and move the engineers out of Cornell Center and over to 10 hangar attics, I've got just one thing for you all to keep in mind. Please keep a close eye on your fridge, because I like to eat a lot. As 14 SCS and MPU join together today, we are ready to work closer than we ever have before, equipped to attack the multitude of challenges and provide support to the force development of the CP-140 weapon system. We are all ready to support Block 4, as the next big push in modernizing the LP force. So in closing, my sincere thanks to each and every person who's made this day such a resounding success, and a heartfelt thank you for all your support during what has become such a rewarding tour. Thank you. small party gift, I guess this is a sort of a customary thing for each of the CEOs to present, and I gotta tell you folks, I was so panicked because about a month ago I was in my office and I sat bolt upright and I went, oh my god, I don't know what I'm gonna do for a gift. So something quickly came together and uh, I'd like to present today uh, for the last members of 14 SCS, the picture that we took just a few short weeks ago, framed along with uh, a really small inscription, and uh, Andrew, if you would mind, if you could come over this way, I'd like to read this inscription, please. So as the last commanding officer of 14 Software Junior Squadron, I present this gift on the occasion of my change of command parade held on the 5th of June 2015. I'm honored to have had this opportunity as your CEO, and I look forward to embarking on a new and exciting era with our friends at the Maritime Improving and Evaluation Unit. To all the owls accompanying us on this journey, I say to you, forward with wisdom. Thank you. Commanding Officer of 14 SES, Major Eric North, will now sign the certificate marking the squadron's closure. The Commandant de l'Escadre et le dernier commandant du 14e PGM, the Major Eric North, will maintenant signer the certificate marking the formation de l'Escadron.
Town, to commemorate his command, the members of 14 SES would like to present Major North with a gift of our own. A framed picture. We have a framed picture of a flower, selected by his wife, so we know he's going to like it. And a framed cover of a magazine, in which he is prominently featured. I would encourage all of our guests to come have a look for themselves at the reception following the parade. Afin de commémorer son commandement, les membres du 14e EGL voudraient présenter le Major North avec un souvenir. Un photo encadré d'une fleur sélectionnée par sa femme. Une couverture encadrée d'une périodique sur laquelle il est en vedette. Je voudrais vous encourager de venir la voir vous-même à la réception suite à la parade. And now, the last NPU commanding officer will now address the parade. Le dernier commandement de l'UME va maintenant s'adresser à la parade. Welcome, uh, Major General Joyce, honored guests, ex-members of MPMU, 14 SES and 415 Squadron, fellow turns on parade, families and friends. J'étais averti aujourd'hui bien, bien plus vite que je pensais. To everyone at MPMU, there is so much more I would like to help you to do. It's hard to believe there's anything left, given everything you've done in the past two years, but somehow the list is not getting any shorter. Uh, each and every one of you has impressed me. Chacun vous m'a impressionné. I welcome Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Davis taking over 415 Squadron, and I know what, that he will be impressed with you all as I have been. Although I can't mention everyone, there are a few that I can't leave without thanking. Austin, you've helped me take care of our people, handle huge things on your own, and more important, been a friend. When I took over two years ago, I talked about how often our trails had crossed from tech to air crew. I feel even closer to you, Evelyn, and the boys now. I know our paths will cross again. I have some flowers for Evelyn. I hope you don't mind. I've got a gift for you in my cabinet at home. <laughs> JP and Serge, my DCOs, you are both the sounding board for strategy taking care of all the things that stopped me from focusing on our mission and also for being in friends. To the wing commander, Colonel Ian Huddleston, you were always supportive. You gave us the leeway to do what we do best, and whenever we needed support, you were there. Thank you. To the families that let us work late when we finally made that breakthrough or when we had to get this one last thing done and you let us deploy on short notice at horrible times, I can't thank you all enough. Elisa, you've been my partner and my wife for 22 years. I can't thank you enough for being at my side and my support for the last two years. I guess you can tell I feel sad about leaving. I miss you all. I'm also sad to be saying goodbye to the term. I've served for MPU two tours almost six years. Not quite as long as Al Harvey, but still a long time. MPU has 56 years of history as a unit, and our folks have done more interesting stuff in more interesting places than I could begin to recount, perhaps at the mess tonight. We are not saying goodbye to the turns, however. Al Harvey will be collecting names for a turn society, and he has a contact card for you. He will be around today and tonight at the mess dinner. Uh, grab a card, fill it out, and give him your info. If you don't see him, or if you have friends who want to get in contact, you can always find him on the VPI net. Spread the word. Although I'm sad to see the turn begin its migration to the museum in front of you, the return of 415 Squadron is the right thing for the development of the Aurora fleet into the future. Une chose qui m'a mis plus à l'aise de dire au revoir au stern et de dire bienvenue à l'escadron et l'histoire d'un jeune capitaine de l'escadron 415. The stand down of 415 Squadron was 10 years ago, right here, where you are today. The young color officer who proudly marched the 415 colors on parade was in tears as he marched them off parade and entombed them in the museum in front of you. That young officer is now my DCO, Serge Pierre Parisien. 
Whenever I feel sad, I try to think about that young captain getting ready to bring those colors back into the sun. My sadness at seeing the symbol of the turn and the owl disappear is what motivated my gift. The first place. The turn and the owl are fading, but are now part of 415's history. You'll notice that I carved them smaller and behind the swordfish, they are rendered as symbols where Sydney is again alive and in greater detail. I thought through much symbolism as I sat working in my shop. I hope it reminds the new members of 415 of their now recent roots as they march forward to the mark. Thank you. I love you. marking the renaming of MPU. Although I don't think I can match the feeling with which Major Thorne presented his gift, I would still like to have the pleasure to invite him back up to present him with a gift from the members of MPNU to him. As you are sad to see the turn go, so is the, the turn sad to see you go. Here in the bag we have a bottle of rare scotch from Cape Breton and two whiskey tumblers handcrafted with the MPNU crest. Remind you of your time not only with MPU, but in the province of Nova Scotia. Again, I would invite everyone to come see the gifts for themselves at the reception following the parade. Fin de commémorer son commandement, les membres de l'UME voudraient présenter la meilleure tombe avec une souvenir. Une bouteille de scotch, hard, quatre patons, et deux verres en cristal marqué avec le blason de l'escadron pour lui rappeler de son temps avec une thé et en Nouvelle-Écosse. Je voudrais encore vous encourager de venir voir vous-même à, à la réception suite à la parade. The 14 Wing Commander, Colonel Huddleston, will now address the parade. Le commandant du 14e escadre, le Colonel Huddleston, va maintenant s'adresser à la parade. Major General Joyce, Colonel Talberger, Colonel Dunn, Lieutenant Colonel Davis, Major Thorne, Major North, Honorary Colonel Silver, Honored Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Officers, Men and Women of 14 Software Engineering Squadron, and the Maritime Proving and Evaluation Unit, the Owls and the Turns. Merci beaucoup à vous tous d'être ici pour cet événement important. C'est un grand honneur pour moi d'être ici aujourd'hui comme votre commandant d'Escal pour cette cérémonie, cérémonie de passation de commandement entre ces trois officiers loués de l'Aviation Royale du Canada. 
The change of command ceremony is an important event in the life of any squadron. It is an, it is an opportunity to mark the contribution of the outgoing commander while at the same time welcoming the new commander into the family. For the two units standing forward on parade, today is particularly significant as the 5th of June 2015 will mark the retirement of both units and the rebirth of another. While we as Canada's long-range patrol community can celebrate the stand-up of 415 Squadron, the retirement of both 14 SES and MPNU must certainly give us pause. Both 14 SES and MPNU have had a critical role to play in LRP Force success over their many years of service. Most recently, they have led the development of the CP-140 Aurora through the trials and tribulations of the Aurora Incremental Modernization Program into the aircraft it is today. The Block 3 Aurora and its mission suite is considered an indispensable asset by our commanders and coalition partners in the fight against ISIS in Iraq and Syria. And we haven't finished improving the aircraft. MPNU and 404 Squadron actually has a small team deployed to theater as we stand here on parade today, focused on further developing one of the most recently introduced capability enhancements. The, coup, the, the two commanding officers who have just finished their command tours have been instrumental to these efforts. Major North, as the last CO of 14 SES, has transformed a unit that had lost its purpose into a critical enabler, filling an important gap in the system's engineering support required to address the software support requirements of the modern Aurora weapon system. His ideas have formed the basis of what will become a refocused engineering flight within the new 415 squadron, with Eric becoming the first engineering flight commander of that unit as of today. Major Thorne, the last CEO of MPNU, has motivated his team to operate in a constant state of surge, addressing critical capability gaps and enhancement projects in rapid succession. His leadership and professionalism have met the difference between success and failure in projects that have the highest visibility within the RCF and ones which have expanded our capabilities to the point where the Aurora and its crews compete favorably with our most advanced allies. Bernie leaves us for Ottawa and will be promoted prior to his departure. This is a promotion that he richly deserves. To both Eric and Bernie, I say thank you, and I extend that, of course, to their wives, Christine North and Elisa Thorne, for their support and for putting up with the work schedule and the focus of their husbands. Jim Carrey says that behind every good man is a good woman rolling her eyes. I think these two fit that bill to a T. And that brings us to the question, why are we retiring these two units if they have been so critical to LRP success? The answer lies in the complexities of the modern force development environment. As the aircraft became more and more complex, the roles and responsibilities of these two units began to overlap, with both units focused on similar goals and challenges. Bringing them together into a single unit not only creates synergy between some of our most dedicated and intelligent members, but it will also serve to amplify their impact on the fleet moving forward. This new synergy has already paid off, in fact. Without a doubt, the close collaboration between these two units and their commanding officers over the past two years is one of the main reasons that we are enjoying so much success today in Off Impact. So today we stand up 415 Long Range Patrol Force Development Squadron. 415 Swordfish has a storied history within the Long Range Patrol community and it is fitting that in retiring two such proud units as 14 SES and NPNU that we stand up another that can have equal pride in its accomplishments those in the past and those yet to come. 415 was stood down 10 years ago on this very parade ground and it is fitting that we join here today to celebrate its rebirth. Lieutenant Colonel Davis, Jeff, I am very excited to have you rejoin the team here at 14 Wing and for you to take your place as the first commanding officer of the new 415 LRP FD squadron. You have many challenges ahead and I'm going to expect a great deal of you as will Colonel Talber Talberger after me. Your job will be to ensure that you maintain the level of effort and success that your two predecessors have maintained. With the LRP force fully engaged in combat operations, we cannot afford a dip in mission focus or output as we transition to the new force development structure. I have no doubt that you are up to the task. Lucy, welcome again to Greenwood and to the Long Range Patrol family. I enjoyed meeting you yesterday on the golf course, and I'm certain that you'll be rolling your eyes with the rest of the ladies. We have a great deal of fun here as a team, and we're very glad for you to be a part of that. For the members of 415 Squadron, today begins a new chapter in your squadron's history. There are many veterans of 415 here to cheer you on, joined now, of course, by the veterans of both 14 SES and MPNEU. I thank you for the many things you've accomplished as part of those two units, and for the things you will accomplish together as Swordfish. Admitam. Now invite Lieutenant 
Lieutenant Colonel Davis to sign the certificate formally renaming the Maritime Improving and Evaluation Unit to 415 Force Development Squadron. Wow, what an awesome feeling. Major General Joyce, Colonel Halston, distinguished guests, members of 14 Wing, 14 Squadron alumni, Honorary Colonel Silver, Colonel Falberger, ladies and gentlemen. It's a tremendous honor to be here today to take command of 415 Squadron. It's a privilege to be given the reins to stand this great unit back up and to set the culture of the squadron by combining 14 SES and MP and EU. It's fantastic to be back at 14 Wing involved in flying operations and to be part of the team that will work on force development of a tremendous new capability to modernize aircraft. Becoming a CO has been a career goal of mine since 1996 when I first arrived in Greenwood and I first sat in the 405 Squadron briefing room and listened to then Squadron CO Lieutenant Colonel Bill Ricketts discussing ongoing operations and the Aurora estimated life expectancy, which was up then. Wow, we've come a long way. As most people who assume command know, seldom is the journey easy and much support is required as my previous people to speak have mentioned. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank a few people. So busted over this past week and a half. Further, to the members of 415 Squadron past for their achievements, to the members of 415 Squadron present for all the work, hard work you've done and accomplished, and to the members of 404 and 405, I'll call you 415 Squadron future, and I look forward to working with, with you as well. Finally, to my family and friends who have supported me throughout my career, most uh, who are here today, I thank you for sharing this special occasion. To my girlfriend Lucy for coming down from Ottawa and spare, uh, sharing such a special day, thank you. To my two wonderful daughters, Ashley and Caitlin, who I've spent uh, time apart from over most of the last five years, the last two spent in Ottawa. Though I saw them often, I look forward to attending more school concerts, piano recitals, and certainly more basketball games. Over the last two weeks, I've witnessed all the hard work done by the two units standing in front of you and now that now make up 415 Squadron and seeing their outstanding professionalism, dedication, and teamwork. Moving forward, we must continue to balance all of our projects, our training, and our personal and family life to maximize efficiencies and achieve the best results. We will continue to evaluate all of our priorities as we work together with our partners within Greenwood, the fleet, the Canadian Armed Forces and industry as we bring this impressive capability through Block 3 and into Block 4 and get it to the mark. We will continue to deliberately force develop the CP-140M through all of our various operational testing and evaluation of projects and tactics progression. We will continue, continue to conduct long-range patrol operations 
complete the amalgamation of these two units and reignite the great culture and strong traditions of 415 Squadron. I look forward to the challenges of the next two years and we'll bring with, the, we'll bring with vigor and enthusiasm and excited to be commanding this new unit as part of the 14 wing team. Thank you, merci, ad medal. The joining of the two flights on parade marks the symbolic amalgamation of the two units. gentlemen, if I might draw your attention to the right flank of the parade, where 415 Squadron Color Party will encase the colors. Please rise for the march on to 415 Squadron Colors.
Officer, Major General Joyce, will now join the Wing Commander and preside over the presentation of the colors of the 415 Squadron Commanding Officer. Le officier de revue va maintenant joindre dans le commandant de l'escorte pour présider la présentation du drapeau au commandant du 415e escadron. 415 Color Officer!
Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez demeurer debout pour la bénédiction de la parade pour l'aumônier Macdonald. Gentlemen, I invite you to join me in this morning's benediction. Prayer with the Seigneur. Almighty and ever living God, in you we live, move, and have our being. We honor you and we praise you for having this moment and ask your blessing and presence as we see the emerging of 415 Squadron into a unit of great promise of expertise, support, and of greater service to the Canadian Armed Forces and all those we are called to serve. Seigneur, Nous vous remercions pour tout ce qui ont servi au sein de l'unité d'évaluation maritime et la 14e escadron de le soutien de logiciel, ainsi que tous ceux qui ont été associés avec eux récemment ou au fil des années. As Lieutenant Colonel Davis assumes command of 415 Squadron, grant him the grace he needs to lead and to guide effective force development. Grant also, dear Lord, the blessing upon each and every member under his command, their families, and as we greet new directions and purpose, all for your honor and glory. Amen. Please be seated. We have us one. L'officier de revue va maintenant s'adresser à la parade. Colonel Huddleston, Chief Warner for Jet Day, Honorary Colonel Silver, Commanding Officers, Distinguished Guests, Former Members of 415 Squadron, New Members of 415 Squadron, Members on 14 Wing on Parade, Friends, Family, Messieurs et Mesdames, welcome to this very special event that we've been anticipating for the last 10 years. I'm truly honored to be speaking here today. I have a confession to make, though. I never served on 415 Squadron in my 15 years of flying out of 14 Wing. Why, then, am I standing up here, you may ask? Well, frankly, you could not have kept me away. I wouldn't have missed this day because stand up 415 Squadron today is deeply personal to me. You see, 10 years ago, almost to the day, my friend, and at the time, Wing Commander Perry Maddy, told me that I was appointed parade commander in the closure of my sister's squadron, 415. And I said to him, really? Kind of a tough one. I was a CO 405 at the time. Ten years ago, Chief Warrant Officer Mike Clark and I led the parade here in this beautiful parade square, also known as the Canex parking lot, that culminated in the 415 standard being encased in the glass in the museum behind us. I shed a tear that day with my friend and colleague, Yvan Boilard, the last commanding officer of 415, as the color party march through these doors behind me. I would be nowhere else today. And again, I did shed a tear as these proud colors marched in front of the assembled 415 members. However, tears today are not reserved for the rebirth of 415. And we've already seen that. In the words of attributed to Roman philosopher Seneca the Younger, but better known to most of us, at the 1998 song Closing Time by the band Semisonic. Every new beginning comes from some other beginning then. And of course, I'm talking about the closure of Fortune SES and MPNU today, which have proudly served for the Royal Canadian Air Force for decades, and now combine today to resurrect the proud historic of the memory. Donc, préparant mes commentaires pour la sacrament ce matin, j'ai consulté plusieurs amis qui ont façon positivement notre communauté au cours des années. I had to reach out to 
friends of the community, people that have invested time, treasure, and sweat into this community to find out what they were thinking. And I'll try to do justice to their thoughts as they passionately wrote back to me. For example, soon to be Brigadier General Scott Howden and former commanding officer of NPU wrote, the amalgamation of NPU and 14 SES has been a relatively constant theme over the last 20 years, even when he was here. So it's not a new idea, but it's certainly an idea that has come of age. Scott also asked me to somehow weave into my presentation a theme of the Toronto Maple Leafs. For those that know him, he is a diehard fan. So of course, being a math major in university, I quickly did it, did the math, did the numbers, and I realized that while 415 Squadron has been dormant for 10 years, the Leafs have been retired for almost 50 years. <laughs> Please pass that on to Scott. My friend and a former wing commander, Jim Irvine, talked to me passionately about the period after the closure of 415 as one of the lowest periods in our community's history. But around this time, we seem to have collectively decided that we must become in demand as a capability for the RCF. We simply needed to somehow get into the fight. The likes of Colonel Jack Baxter were tireless in beating the drum about the Aurora capability outside the community and outside the Air Force. And we participated and experimented in Army exercises. We deployed to, find, to fly the CP-140 in Afghanistan, and ultimately, we became an RCAF game changer in Bolivia. And now, of course, we're conducting operations over Iraq, again leading the way for the RCAF as a modern, effective ISR capability, best described in Air Force terms as very high demand, very low asset, very low density asset. Nothing warms my heart more than knowing Lieutenant General Vance, the current commander of the Canadian Joint Operations Command, and of course, the upcoming Chief of Defense Staff, that he frets over CP-140 Wi-Fi. We have succeeded. This community is in demand. Colonel Guérin Boilard m'a rappelé qu'au moment de sa clôture, la 415 Escadron était l'escadron le plus prêt au combat de notre communauté. As the CEO at that time, he boasted four combat capable crews and had just returned from a full squadron deployment to active endeavor. At that time, 14 Wing had just completed a major LRP review and then has sponsored a visionary paper that would have seen 415 Squadron make the transition to become the first UAV LRP squadron. Visionary indeed. The Air Force wasn't ready for it at the time. And ironically, just three years later, 14 Wing led the fourth generation of the Heron UAV detachment in Afghanistan. To many here today were part of that critical life-saving capability based out of Kandahar, including the new CEO of 415. The decisions that led to the stand-up of 415, of course, were not easy, nor were they without controversy. Over the last 10 years, we have needed to look at 14 SES and MPMU in a dispassionate and logical way. Our higher headquarters was already looking at what they looked at as the gold-plated test and evaluation solution that we had in MPMU. And 14 SES had become overcome by the new reality. It was too small to be a software solution for Block 3 and Block 4, and just too big to focus on OLA. As a wing commander, during Greenwood, I remember discussing these problems with Jim Baskey, CEO of 14 SES at the time, and Russ Defer, the CEO of MPNU at the time, and successive wing commanders have made more progress until Colonel Huddleston was skillfully able to bring it all together through force of will, a logical argument, which is culminating in today's wonderful event. As an aside, you may not exactly realize how close run thing today actually was. We only received approval to 415 Squadron last week. And believe me, there was some sweating going on here, and there was some sweating going on in Ottawa. However, as a testament to it's not what you know, it's who you know, we had fully engaged Lieutenant Colonel Mike Adamson, 
who just happened to be the former CEO of 405 Squadron, and who happens to be the EA to the Vice Chief of Defense Staff. And we also engaged Lieutenant Colonel Pete Earl, a former AMO at 14 AMS, who currently happens to be the Staff Officer for the Minister of National Defense. It's a get her done. And you can rest assured that the LRP network is alive and well in Ottawa. As I come to the end of my comments, I would like to make a few call-outs. First, I want to congratulate Bernie Ford and Eric Murray for your outstanding leadership on MPNU for his success as well. Extremely well done, guys. I know how difficult it is for you today, but you can be proud of your accomplishments in those reunions. So thank you on behalf of the Commander of the Royal Canadian Air Force, Lieutenant General Blonder. Second, I would like to congratulate Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Davis on assuming command of 415 Squadron, version 2.0. I cannot think of a better qualified aviator to take the reins of this unit with this unique mandate to lead the force development of the LRP community through blocks three, four, and beyond with the operational focus of the Air Force. And finally, I could not step away from this podium without recognizing the contribution of Colonel retired Chris Hanover. Chris, for those of you that know him, have always, has always been a force to be reckoned with, and often a force that I didn't really want to reckon with. But after 415 stood down, Chris personally led the charge to keep Sydney's memory alive. Well done, Chris. Thank you on behalf of the community. Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, admin.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of outgoing commanding officers, Major Thorne and Major Moore. Here, we will enumerate the group for the debate of the commandant of the Sierra Santa, the Major of Nord, and the Major of Nord. Those of you who know Major North and Major Thorne, you may have uh, taken note of the car that they typically drive around in. Major Thorne, a man of uh, considerable stature, is uh, known to be driving around in a, a hot thing. <laughs> well, he, he does fit in. And Major North also drives an old Honda as well. So, what we've tried to do for them today is kick them out in something that I think it's a little bit more appropriate. 